Okay. Can you see the rain? <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plain Air Magazine. I'm not sure if you heard the audio in the opening or not. It sounds like maybe you did not. But I'm saying hello to people from the comments. We've got people from all over the world watching, including Saudi Arabia, Liechtenstein, um, uh, uh, Ireland. Uh, wow, a lot of people from all over and across America. So thank you. Uh, today, we're going to talk about some things that will help you with your public relations. If you are actually these things help with anybody, whether you're an artist or not, but they will be some things that from my perspective as a publisher, uh, some things that I have learned and some things that I have understood about dealing with uh, with artists and dealing with publishers and how I have actually generated some huge amounts of national publicity for myself as a result. Uh, if you were to go to my website, let's see if I can pull it up here real quickly. Uh, see if I can do this. Um, uh, maybe we'll do a we'll do a new one here. Hang on a second. All right, so if you go to ericrhodes.com, and you should be able to see this. Uh, this is my website. Uh, you go to ericrhodes.com, you'll see as we scroll down here, uh, you have, uh, as seen in Success Magazine, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, Entrepreneur, Los Angeles Times, Sky Television in England, Huffington Post, Par uh, Parade Magazine, BBC, PBS, Virgin uh, media, Howard Stern Show, Adweek, CBS, uh, Chicago Tribune, ABC, NBC, YouTube, Ad Age, Bloomberg, uh, Business Insider, NPR, et cetera. And there, I think there's more since that, that was created. The idea here is that um, you can create that kind of publicity for yourself. All of that publicity that was created was created because I, uh, I worked on it. And uh, now, in some cases, I had help. I hired a PR agent in, in one case uh, when I launched my first book, uh, which was uh, 25 years ago. And uh, wow, that was a stunner. Hard to believe that. Anyway, uh, so I hired a PR person at that time. I don't typically use PR people anymore, but sometimes I do. I mean, you know, it's on occasion if I have a project. But I'm going to talk to you about how you can generate publicity for yourself, and that can be helpful for you. First, let's get to a couple of uh, things, a little bit of business. Uh, we have some winners. We Yesterday, I announced three prizes that I'm giving away. An apron from Plein Air Magazine goes to Mill Krissick in Arkansas. Value Specs, uh, the, the red glasses, specialty red glasses that help you see values, go to Linda Klenzar in Michigan. And the easel brush clip goes to Paula Kosovanik, Kozanovic. Kozanovic in Swain in Utah. I'm sorry I butchered your name. Anyway, uh, those are three products that we're uh, giving away today. So congratulations to you. Uh, we also today are going to give away a copy of, of uh, Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, a digital subscription. It's a top magazine. Uh, we have uh, unbelievably beautiful stories that Peter Trippi, our editor, puts together with his team. And uh, Peter is up here visiting me today. He came in last night, so he's today's his birthday, so I'm not making him work, but I'll, try, I'll bring him on camera maybe tomorrow if I can, and maybe ask him some questions or something, and maybe you guys can answer some, ask him some questions. But uh, anyway, he's the guy that does the magazine, does a beautiful job, and so we're gonna give away, for your comments today, uh, if you are chosen, uh, you will win a Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine one-year subscription, digital subscription. I want to remind everybody that uh, I would appreciate a follow on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, it's Eric Rhodes, R-H-O-A-D-S. There's no E. And I would also appreciate if you are, um, if you're watching me on YouTube right there, right, 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 right there, right there. It's hard to do this backwards. Right there is a subscribe button. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do that. And of course, if you're uh, if you're on Facebook or uh, any any medium, Twitter, LinkedIn, others that are that are airing this, please follow me. That would be very much appreciated. Okay, so uh, a couple of things. First off, we're giving away a six thousand dollar painting, a beautiful painting by Carl Dempel. 
And the way you can win that, this is in the month of August, the way you can win that is to go to paintinggiveaway.com. I'm trying to come up with some stuff for you guys to do. Uh, I want to keep you busy, keep you occupied. I know summer's here, uh, and I also know some of you are still in quarantine. So uh, paintinggiveaway.com, you can win a painting. You want to see a picture of it? I'll pull it up for you. I just got to find it here. Uh, but it's a really beautiful painting. I just have to find it. I don't know what I did with it. Um, <laughs> there it is. Okay. Enter to win the stunning painting from Carl Dimple. Uh, retail value is $6,000. He even made the frame. And uh, that is a treasure. That is a treasure. It's a beautiful painting. I, I, uh, he gave me a bunch of paintings to pick from. I picked that one myself. That's the one that I would want if I were uh, winning this, which I am not allowed to. But just put your email and information in there. And your mobile phone is critical because we, uh, last time around, we went to contact the person. Their email had been typed in wrong. And as a result, um, uh, we couldn't reach them. We, we finally reached them, but uh, we needed their mobile phone. And so you want to make sure you put your mobile phone in there. All right. Uh, a couple other things before we get to the seven uh, public relations tips for artists. I want to remind everybody that we've got a big event coming up in October. It's called Realism Live. I was just on the phone with Jill Carver, the, uh, the artist who was on Plein Air Live, one of many artists that was on. And she was talking about how wonderful it was because there were so many people who never were able to go to a plein air convention, for instance, and, and go or go to live workshops, but they were able to go to something like Realism Live. It was an opportunity for a lot of people who, you know, they, uh, they have health issues, they can't travel, they have family issues, they can't travel, they have financial issues, they can't travel, they have, you know, whatever it is that is, is holding them at home, this was really able to scratch the itch. And, and we were talking about how how wonderful it was to meet new people and to see new people that we hadn't seen before. So this is Realism Live is about realism. And what that means is it's not about abstract painting, but it's about painting things that you can tell what it is, whether it's a the human figure in a loose form or a tight form or a human figure in multiple figures, whether it's the portrait uh, in, in a storytelling form, a, a portrait, uh, let's see, like this, this is a Josh LaRock, whether it's a landscape, studio landscape, whether it is a floral painting, uh, we have it all at Realism Live. If you know what it is, it's realism. And we, we have top instructors. Uh, we have uh, incredible instructors. We have Daniel Sprick. Uh, we have uh, Joshua LaRock. We have Rose Franson. We have uh, Graydon Parrish. For whatever reason, I, I need some more graphics. But we have Juliet Aristides. Uh, and... We have, uh, where did I put that? Dan Gerhardt's. Uh, so, and it's growing. The list is growing. There's going to be a lot more. Peter Trippi and I are sitting down today to finalize some of the details. And so a lot is going on. So you want to make sure you sign up for Realism Live before August 30th, because August 30th is the deadline date before the price goes up. And we've already got 600 people signed up, maybe more. I haven't checked in a, in a week and a half or so. But uh, please know that you need to get signed up to save yourself 100 bucks. All right. So I want to talk today a little bit about um, PR tips, because I think this is something that, that, um, that you need. I, I was talking to my wife, and Lori does a lot of graphics for us and uh, does put some things together. And she was telling me a story about uh, something that happened recently where we had an opportunity to promote an artist and we did not have a good photo of that artist. And the photo we had turned out to be very low resolution, wouldn't reproduce, couldn't put in the magazine. And as a result, the artist didn't get coverage because we had lousy photos. And so I said this morning, I said, what should I talk about today? And she said, talk about that. Talk about the mistakes that artists make that they can overcome if they get prepared. So uh, we're going to talk about that, and let's see here. All right. So I think you've been I, – I messed up this morning. I apologize if you've been seeing this other screen. So I am now going to uh, share a screen and talk about this. So hang on a second. I've got to find the right one. Hang on. This is a – this is. I need a producer. <laughs> okay. So – what are the seven PR tips, sub, seven public relations tips for artists? Okay, so the first one 
is that professionals act professional. And what I mean by that is that if you have come to the conclusion or made the decision that you're going to be a professional artist, what that means is that you're going to be selling your artwork and you're going to make your living or part of your living as a professional artist, then it's really important to learn how professionals behave because professionals behave differently than amateurs because professionals are well prepared they have things uh, a little better under control. And those of us who are in the media expect certain standards from people who are asking us to give them publicity. And uh, when they cannot live up to those standards, they don't end up getting publicity. It's not that we don't want to, but you know, you're rushing around, you're trying to get an issue out, you got a deadline, and all of a sudden, you find out that, that you don't have the right kind of photograph or something, then it becomes a problem. So professionals act like professionals. So the first thing is you want to always be press ready. And, and what that means is the minute someone calls you unexpectedly and says, hey, we have an opportunity for you. We were, we're going to, um, we're going to uh, do a story on you, uh, but we need something today. Because here's what happens. You know, we're, we're running... Uh, multiple magazines. We're running around like crazy and something happens. Something, something falls out. You know, somebody does not produce the story they say they were going to produce or the images are bad. And so we can't use them. And so we have to fill the story. Let's say we're doing a story on animals, animal portraits or something. So we then say, okay, who can we call real quickly that does animals that should be in this story that wasn't and so, you know, we'll pick up the phone and we'll call somebody and we'll say, hey, uh, we're doing this story. Sorry for the last minute notice, but we need something today. And if you've got something today, that would be really valuable. So here's, here's essentially what press ready means. You want to have a complete bio and you want your bio to be updated and spell checked and be very professionally written. And so you can hire somebody on Fiverr to do that for you or you can find somebody to do it. But we, we get a lot of bios that have typos and mistakes. And the worst thing though, is they're not updated. So I, I go to websites, sometimes uh, there was somebody we were gonna do a story on, I won't mention a name. And I went to the website and the website had a 30 year old picture on it. Uh, the bio hadn't been updated in probably 10 years. And we went ahead and we, we thought, should we consider this artist? And we thought, no, nope, Good artist, but not willing to uh, take the time to update his or her website. And so we moved on and looked for another one. And that's because we, we thought, here's what we're going to run into. You know, there's a 30-year-old photo. They don't have a, a current photo. They probably aren't going to have high-res photos. We're not going to have what we need. So rather than knowing that we're going to go through it, so we find another artist. We go to their website. They've got their bio is current. They have the most recent wins in the shows. They have, uh, you know, a variety of photos, that kind of a thing. So being press ready is having quality photos and a bio. And quality photo means high resolution photos. You, you know, if I'm publishing in print, I have to have something that works out for, I think it's 300 DPI. And if it's going to be big, then it, it has to be a pretty large file. I want to see something that's been professionally produced. You know, oftentimes we'll get something that's a snapshot in an iPhone and not to diss iPhones. I mean, you can do beautiful work with it, but they're even because of the megapixel size, there's limits on how big you can make it. You know, if you wanted to do something really big, you couldn't. Uh, and sometimes they're not, you know, they're not well thought out. They're not good photos. And, and yet you go to somebody like Lori McNee and she has, photos done by a professional photographer. She has, you know, you say, give me some photos. She's got 10 to choose from. That's the kind of thing I mean by being bio ready. And you need to be responsive. You need to be able to say, yes, I can, I can put that in a, in a, I can download that for you today. That's uh, being press ready. Now, the other things that I'm going to talk to you about are just some practical tips. Uh, they, seem to make sense, but a lot of people don't do this. And this has really helped me in my career. The number two thing is to get to know the editors. And 
you you know how uh, have you ever met somebody for the first time? And they call you, uh, you meet them at a cocktail party on Friday night. They call you on Monday morning and they say, hey, we met at a cocktail party on Friday night and uh, I need this from you. And you're like, I don't even know this person. I haven't gotten to know them. And, and they're already asking me for something. Or they're, they're, you know, they call you up and they say, hey, will you loan me money? <clears throat> you have to develop trust. You have to build trust. So rather than just calling editors and, and saying, hey, would you do some coverage of me? Why not call the editors, get to know them and say, hey, I wanted to get to know you. I want to understand what you're looking for, what kind of stories you're looking for. Uh, because, you know, I, I would like to eventually get some coverage. And that's more a uh, humble approach. It's, it's also more practical. And of course, the other thing is when you get to know editors, you know, you can get, I bring my editors, uh, Sherry Don Haas and and uh, Kelly Kane to the Plein Air Convention every year. Uh, they're there, you know, they're out trying to, to, to meet people. They want to discover artists. They want to learn about artists. They want, they're looking for ideas. And so use those opportunities to get to know them. It doesn't mean you want to be abusive, those situations, you know, you, you can overdo it. Uh, but, and, and if you're on the phone with them, you know, just know they're busy. So don't make these like these marathon phone calls. We have some artists who call and we know that if that artist calls, we're going to burn an hour or two hours. And sometimes artists or anybody, not just artists, sometimes people just burn time. And there are times when we'll say, yeah, we want to talk to them because this is something that's really important. But there are times when you're busy, it's like, I don't have a lot of time. I'm not going to take that call right now. Uh, the same thing is true on social media. Uh, so I get uh, on average of five to seven uh, new people contacting me by messenger, Instagram messenger or something every single day, new people. And uh, some of them I know are, are what they call clickbait, right? You know, it's a picture of a pretty girl and it says, hi. Well, I know that that's some kind of a spam thing. So I just delete those right away. But if it's you and you're saying hi, I, unless there's a personal connection, unless you say, hi, Eric, you know, I'm an artist, I read your magazine. Now I know that you're not a machine doing that. And then you do something. But what happens is that people will send these, these uh, biblical, and I don't, I don't mean content biblically, but these really long uh, posts. And when I got five or seven of those a day, I'm checking five or six different email channels. I've got three, four, 500 emails to get through in a day. I'm not spending a lot of time on these things. I'm glancing. So get to the point. Uh, you know, it, it gets to the point where, you know, some people ramble and that's who they are. I get it. But, uh, and there is, there's a time for that. I'm not trying to be uh, a jerk about this, but there, there's a time for it. And so don't ramble, you know, because if you're dealing with busy editors, whether it's me or whether it's Peter or whether it's our editors, other editors, or whether it's somebody else, you know, they're trying to get a job done. They've got a, you know, they got a, 12 hour job, they got to fit into an eight hour window. And so look for ways to get to know them and, and, and also remember that they might not remember your name. So figure out ways to follow up and to stay visible without being annoying. Uh, what's annoying is the person who sends us 20 images every single week. That's annoying. And I don't, I don't, again, not mean meaning to be rude to people, but you know, you get that times 50 emails a day that gets to be tough. So what ends up happening is it's just delete city, right? So you want to think about that. Um, the other thing is don't burn editors. We have been burned so many times. And here's what that means is, uh, hey, uh, Eric, I've got, a, I've got an idea for a great story. I've written a story on, you know, we're walking through the Grand Canyon and this mountain lion came up and I've got pictures and, you know, it's a really great story. And I, I've got some paintings that I did that relate to the story. Would you do the story? And we're like, hey, that's cool. Yeah, we'll do the story. And then we do the story and then we pick up a competitive magazine and we, we see the same story, same words, same photos in the competitive magazine. And that happened to me one time where three magazines ran it at the exact same time. Uh, I felt so burned because that artist didn't reveal that to me. If they would have said, hey, I'm going to be doing this in Southwest Art, or I'm going to be doing this in American Art Collector, or, you know, something like that, 
I would have probably said, well, you know, pick one of us. Don't pick all three of us because that's not fair to us. And because you're always looking to be unique. You don't want to run, run the same thing everybody else runs. So when that one artist sent all, all three of the editors, first off, we all know each other. Sometimes we talk to each other. And so I guarantee you all three of those editors will never run anything for that artist again. So you might make some progress one time, but you're not going to make progress ever again be, until there's a new editor who doesn't know that you're going to burn them. So just don't burn editors, you know, tell them the truth, tell them what's going on and, and give people exclusives. Uh, but also don't hold exclusives over their head, their head. You know, if somebody calls me and says, if you don't do it, I'm sending it to this guy. I like just send it to them. You know, they, I don't want to deal with jerks. Right. So be nice to people. Don't burn editors, but editors can be your best friends. All right. The next thing is uh, pitch a unique concept. Um, what are you doing? What's happening in your life? What's happening in your painting? What's a story that has occurred that everybody would love to hear? Look for a unique, unique angle. Look for something that not everybody else is doing. You know, uh, find something unique about your story because you know, it can get pretty boring when all the stories are all the stories, you know, everything's the same. But if you, you know, you have, uh, I was going down the trail. I, 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 um, Kathleen Hudson has this wonderful story. She's out painting a waterfall. She's walking down the trail and she encounters this moose. It's a great story. We tell, we story, tell the story on, on, uh, on her video, I believe. And so that would have made a great article. I don't know if we did that as an article or not, but it would have been a really good one because it was unique and she had pictures of the moose and, you know, it was dangerous and, and it emphasizes the things you have to be careful about when you're out painting. And so there's a lot of things that you can do that are unique. So pitch a unique concept. Um, this one is interesting. Now, a lot of us are not writers and we get a lot of people who submit things that are not writers and they're really not very good. And unfortunately, they're not very careful. So uh, it's disrespectful. And, and I'm not suggesting I or anybody is deserving of respect, but I am suggesting that I would never uh, send in, uh, something off to someone without it being properly vetted. All right. So would you send me a story that you want me to run and it's filled with typos and grammar errors and, you know, uh, not well fact checked and so on? No, you wouldn't. I mean, I would hope you wouldn't. So if you're writing something, uh, write it the best you can. Get another set of eyes to look at it. And if you're really a pro, a pro will use a pro writer because those of us who are not good writers, I'm a really good writer but I'm not really good at certain types of writing. So I know where my weaknesses are and I will hire a writer or I'll, I'll give it to one of my writers. I've got several writers on staff and I'll hand it to them and say, can you do something to make this look good? Cause I can't, I can't see it. And uh, so that's what you want to do is find somebody to submit it in high quality form. Well, what happens is if it's submitted in high quality form and uh, and we know the writers that we can rely on. And, and we sometimes, the same, same thing, we'll call somebody and we'll say, hey, we're in a pinch. We had something cancel. Can you, you have anything? Or what is really nice for all of us is to have something parked that we can pull in. So if somebody sends something to one of my editors and it's a story, and then maybe, that, maybe they like the story and they're planning on using it in a future issue, uh, or maybe it's like, well, this one is pretty good and we're in a pinch. Let's go ahead. We've got it. We've got the photos. We've got the scans. It's high quality photos. Let's use it for filler. Uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, in the course of my career as a, as a publisher that we have had articles drop out. You know, we've had every possible situation. We've had articles that were due uh, from, from people who... Uh, ended up in car accidents and could you know couldn't get to it uh, and we had a situation where somebody died uh, we had we've had situations where you know their internet went out and they couldn't get it to us and you know we've had all kind, you know, every imaginable situation and then the the biggest one though is people miss their deadlines 
And galleries will tell me this every time. Galleries would tell you the same things in this apply to them. Uh, they, here they are. They're doing a show for you. Uh, they say, look, the images have to be in uh, scan at this resolution by this date. And then the artist doesn't get him in by that date. And they're holding up the printing of the book for the show and your stuff doesn't come in. It puts them in a very big bind. And, you know, it comes in late, doesn't sometimes doesn't come in at all. They don't have the, the proper materials to sell. They will fire, they will terminate an artist on those terms because they say, if you're going to be, act, be a pro, act like a pro. So use that in everything you do and it'll make a big difference. Great photos get attention. Um, if you have, uh, first off, learning good photography skills is really important, especially if you're doing your own photography. Uh, there's tons of online classes. There's photography. I took a photography class from, from uh, I can't think who it was, uh, on master class. You know, it was cheap. It, you know, it was maybe a hundred bucks or something. And I learned a lot about it. Uh, Annie Leibowitz. And uh, it wasn't a very good course. Don't take it. I wasted my time, I think. But, um, but I learned a couple of tips. But there are courses on how to photograph with iPhones. There's courses on how to do things. And it's about cropping. It's about posing. It's about the right kind of things. Great photos really make a difference. We don't want to put bad snapshots in our magazines. We want things that look professional. And so learning how to do good photos is important, but also giving a lot of variety. And, and you know, if you're in a situation, sometimes it is just a snapshot, but you know, try to take multiple angles, multiple pictures, get low, get high, get to the side, zoom in, Try a lot of different things to emphasize it uh, and, you know, make sure that you get people looking good, right? And that makes a big difference because we like to show pictures of people. So make sure that you have great photos. And last, don't whine. And what I mean by that is uh, we have had situations where somebody will call and they'll say, I sent you an article and it didn't appear in the magazine. And we'll say, yeah, well, you know, we couldn't do it for whatever reason, you know, and sometimes it's, if, if an article's really bad, we typically won't tell somebody it's bad because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Uh, but sometimes we will, if it's, especially if it's somebody we know and trust, we can say, you know, could you rewrite that? But, you know, sometimes they'll rewrite it two or three times and they're not good. And we will get scolded or people will whine. Oh, you didn't run right. You know, it's just like, be a professional. Professionals don't whine. Professionals don't scold. Professionals don't treat people badly. Treat people with respect. Uh, you have to trust that the professionals that you're dealing with are doing the best job they can do. And if you can do something uh, and, and give them that respect, they're going to give you the respect back. Not every article that gets submitted gets run. I mean, some articles just aren't good. They're not going to be interesting. Our goal is to provide interesting content to people. And so, uh, when you don't get your way, don't stomp your feet, don't hang up. I mean, if so, my rule is if somebody hangs up on me, I write them out of my life, unless it's my kids. And <laughs> there are moments, right? I, I don't let anybody hang up on me ever. Somebody hangs up on me, you know, they get mad, they hang up. I go into the context. First thing I do is I go into the context and I delete their contact. And I make a mental note that this is not a person that is deserving of my time or my respect because they're not able to do that to me. And, uh, you know, that's an immaturity thing. And that's what professionals don't do. If you're angry, if you have an issue, you're welcome to say it. You can say it in a nice way without being disrespectful. You know, hey, I worked really hard on that article. Is there any possible way it could be used in the future? Because, you know, I, I really would love to see it published. That's respectful saying, you know, you're a jerk, you know, and we've had people say those kinds of things. And, and when those people uh, rear their ugly faces, we write them out of our life. It's just the way we have to do it. You know, you have to be selective. It's not because we want to be jerks. It's because we're trying to be professionals, dealing with professionals, running a professional business. So anyway, that's uh, the seven tips. I hope that's been helpful for you. And uh, if not, I'm sorry, I would, I'll work harder on it next time. It's raining here in the Adirondacks. Uh, we have the big storm coming through and it is uh, it's just, I went out this morning, I had to go to the chiropractor, hurt my back. And, uh, so I got up real early this morning, drove into Lake Placid, went to the chiropractor, got snapped, drove back, 
had some breakfast, uh, spent some time with Peter Trippi and David, and uh, just had a really great morning. And But I had to go out in the rain uh, on the boat to get to the car. And so I've got my rain slicker on and, you know, the water's spraying in my face and I can't see anything because, the, you know, I'm going as fast as I can. The water is splattering me and I've got the roof up and but I can't see it because of the plastic. So I'm holding the, the, the roof open a little bit so I can peek out. It was a really an interesting life, life on a boat. And it's a lot of fun. So uh, reminders for you guys today. Uh, a couple of reminders. First off, if you have not yet seen Sunday Coffee this week, uh, uh, if you haven't opened it, if you get it by email, uh, open it up, read it. And if you have read it, uh, I'd love to have your comments at sundaycoffee.com. Also, I mean it coffeewitheric.com. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd love for you to be. That would be really cool. I'd be honored to do that. I want to remind you that uh, Realism Live is coming up in October, but the deadline is the 30th of uh, August to get the, uh, the $100 savings on that. So you want to make sure you do that. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about Russia. Uh, I'm taking a group, uh, assuming uh, we're COVID-free, I'm taking a group to Russia in September of next year, and uh, it's going to be a 50-person trip. We're going to ta- have to limit it to 50 people because of room limitations. Uh, we're going to be starting out in St. Petersburg. Uh, we're going to go to the great museums. We're going to paint. We're going to visit the, some art studios of living and dead artists. We're going to go into the small villages where there's all this beautiful stuff, um, we're going to go to Moscow, St. Petersburg, and uh, a couple of villages in between, including the great academic Dasha, where uh, the great um, uh, Catherine the Great created uh, uh, the place for people to learn plein air painting in the middle of the country. And we're going to go to the Repin Institute and the Serikov Institute, the great Russian academies. Uh, we're going to visit there. We're going to meet with uh, a lot of the different people. We're going to some really cool museums. Anyway, if you want to go on that trip, uh, we're going to have the details out here in probably another week, maybe two weeks. Uh, so go to paintrussia.com and then we'll get on the list and then we will send it. And the people, it's first come, first serve. Uh, if you're on the first 50, we go to the first 50 and we say, okay, you, you know, are you healthy? Yes. Can you go? Yes. Yeah. Here's the price. Do you want to do it? If you, they say yes, then they're on the list. If they say no, then we go to the 50 for, you know, we, we do the first 50 and then we go to the second 50 and so on. And so uh, I don't know how many are signed up. I haven't checked yet, but you might want to go to that. It's going to be life changing. We are still uh, doing fall color week uh, unless we're not able and we don't know yet, but it's October 12th through 19. It may be the only event we do all year. It's a painter's retreat. It's going to be in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, a beautiful place for the Hudson River School painters painted. And so that is a, um, a possibility. It might get canceled, but we have a money back guarantee on everything. So if, if we have to cancel, you can get your money back. All right. Uh, a reminder that I, I just learned that 278 Michael stores are going to be carrying plein air magazine. We're very, uh, thrilled and proud and honored about that. And so, uh, that's, um, that's going to start in October. So you're going to have to go in there and get them. A reminder that I have a podcast called the Plen Air Podcast, and you can find it on uh, places you find podcasts, iTunes and otherwise. And then I have another one called the Art Marketing Minute Podcast, and that's where we deal with art marketing stuff. Last but not least, two more things. One is we have a painting competition called the Artist and Selfie Competition. We're trying to get artists to do um, uh, various uh, the self-portraits, por- paintings of other artists, paintings of art studios, and paintings of artists painting in plein air. And uh, we got a lot of entries so far. I think we're going to extend the deadline a little bit. So, but get that in, get your selfies. A lot of you did selfies during the early stages of coronavirus. I know I did mine. I've got to finish it. And last but not least, we're working on a national television show. Uh, we are uh, we are delayed on it because of coronavirus. Uh, we are still trying to raise some money to get it produced, but It's going to happen. It's called the Great Outdoor Painting Challenge, and we're asking for people to join the cast. And so you can go there, thegreatoutdoorpaintingchallenge.com. You can go there and fill out the form to see if you can be on the cast. It's a reality show. It's going to have painters, amateur painters. It's also going to have pros on there in various forms, doing things like uh, uh, judging and and, uh, mentoring and so on. So that is everything I got today. Remember today, 
Uh, what did I, what are we giving away today? Did I say? I didn't say. So let's go back to the comments. I completely forgot to, oh, I did. I did say it's a fine art connoisseur magazine subscription, a digital one. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you guys for watching today. Uh, busy day, pretty crazy things going on. Uh, the world is insane. But remember that if your brain is sane, let's see if we can come up with something. The same brain in rain. Nah, we won't go there. So keep your brain sane. Uh, in the rain, the rain of coronavirus, the rain of protests, the rain of fear, the rain of politics, all this, all this storm that's going on. And keep your brain sane, sane in the midst of all that. And the way to keep your brain sane is to do what you love, be happy, um, watch what you put into your head because what you put in, some of it sticks. Keep the negativity out. Stop doom scrolling. Uh, just be positive. Be, be as upbeat and positive as you can. Dance around. Have some fun. Uh, just make life wonderful no matter what. Because what if, I mean, heaven forbid, but what if this was your last day? Live each day like it was your last. Because you don't want your last day to be your worst. You want it to be your best, right? So what can I do today to make this my best possible day? Ask yourself each morning, what can I do? You know. Uh, be thankful, be grateful. What can I do to make this a great day? And don't let anybody influence you. Don't let anybody make it a bad experience. Make it good. You can start right here. You can make it good. Thank you for your time today. And uh, it's fun doing this. I love doing this every day. And we'll just stick with it as long as we need to. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher, Fine Art Connoisseur, and Plen Air Magazine. Make sure you have a great day. Goodbye.